You found yourself on another episode of Locked on Bulls. In today's episode, me and Pat are going to talk about the Bulls coming in ranked 22nd on ESPN's initial power rankings. P. Will also called the weakest link, and the national media decided to once again call DeMar DeRozan overrated, which means we're in for a big season. We're going to get into all that and more right after this. You are Locked on Bulls, your daily podcast on the Chicago Bulls, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you for tuning in to Locked On Bulls, member of the Locked On Podcast Network, where it's your team every day. That's Pat, the designer, host, and creator of the Windy City Breeze and host of the Chicago Bears podcast over at ESPN 1000. I'm Hayes, host and creator of Chicago Bulls and Chicago Bears Central. Pat, man, uh, we got a couple of topics to get into today. First up, ESPN ranked the Chicago Bulls at 22nd on their initial power rankings after the offseason. That's how they labeled it, even though there's a huge domino in Dame Lillard and possibly James Harden is still fall. But when you look at the Bulls ranking at number 22nd, how do you feel about it? I feel like it was another weird... I, I, I don't dislike it, right? Like, it's... The Bulls are at a point now where it's... We know what this team is. We know what each individual piece brings. You have to show me that the point guard position for the third time now is simply the key to making this team take the next step. And that's a tough ask if, you know, you're running into the season saying Javon Carter's your best bet. Not to say Javon Carter's bad. I do think he's going to help. We both talked about how he was the smart signing, but it's tough to, like, sell me on, you know, they're going to all of a sudden go and be one of the best teams in the NBA just because of Javon Carter. Uh, I do think there'll be improvement, and I th- I don't think that the Bulls are as far off as a lot of people think, but I can see why they ranked them at 22. Like, I'm not – this is not disrespect to me, and you know how power rankings are. Like, sometimes yeah. they just be wild. It's like, how the heck are they – it was weird because, like, I think on that same list, like, OKC was 15th, and I was like, but what the heck have they done? Like, I can see why, like, on the potential of them being there maybe, but, like, it's still just Shea at this point. And, like, I think in the article it was like, but Chet Holmgren's coming. And I was like, what? Like, we don't know what he's going to do at all yet. So I get where the Bulls are ranked right now. But, I mean, like, I don't take much stock into the ESPN or the, the especially not the Bleacher Report power rankings and different things like that. Just Bleacher because, Report power rankings are a, a crap show, bro. Like, Hey, bro, just, just because it's, it's like there's never any cohesion with it. And when you look at the list, like, I think even what it said about the Bulls, right? It was basically very complimentary of what the Bulls did and was just like, but they're going to suck. Yeah. <laughs> and and uh, um, looking at ESPN's power rankings, it makes sense for a team that underperformed last season. We were 40 and 42, had a, had a struggle of a season. And yeah, we added Javon Carter, who's a better point guard than Pat Bev, but there's still questions. You haven't seen how those pieces are going to come together. We were ranked right behind the Indiana Pacers who came in at number 21, and they gave us both the same odds to win a title. So when you kind of look at it that way, it's not horrible, but it's up to the Bulls to prove it wrong, right? Like we were a disjointed team. Uh, We weren't coached well at some times. At points, our players didn't play well. And we still, as of right now, the last taste in a lot of people's mouths is the Bulls got a lot of people who are afraid to take wide open shots. Yeah. So, I mean... It is what it is there. So it's 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 one of those things. And I think it's interesting to think about, right? You think about just the reasoning behind it is simply age, right? The fact that two of our big three are 30 plus. The fact that we're one behind the Pacers to me. Like we both think the Pacers are going to be a good team and have really good play. Yeah, yeah. But had a Bruce Brown got Ben Matherin on that team, Halliburton. So yeah, but the fact that we're one behind them with the Bulls is just like there's a sour taste in your mouth because you feel like okay, yes, we're one behind them, or or we're right where the Pacers are right now. But the Pacers have a chance to continue to improve for years to come. The Bulls have a very limited window with this thing, so I'm not surprised that. I'm not surprised where we're ranked. I'm just, it's very interesting to kind of see like the fact that there's no, it doesn't feel like there's a ton of longevity with this team. Again, is the biggest issue. Again, development. We're going to talk about P. Will. We're going to talk, you know, like the, the, 
is Kobe White going to take a step? Is Dale and Terry going to be a, utilized in the slightest, right? Like if, if we were going to be good because of those younger guys, because, you know, if we were 22nd, we're right there with the Pacers because of Kobe White and P. Will and all that. I feel like we would look at this list very differently, but because it's like, oh, well, we got Zach and DeMar. These are kind of all in moves with DeMar DeRozan and Nikola Vucevic. It's, it's tough. It's tough to see. Yeah, I mean, I think, too, when you look at the Vegas odds, I don't know if you got a chance to look at that. The Bulls are, yeah. are cho chosen to get, like, 36 and a half 36 wins, and a half wins, which yeah. is crazy to me. Like, and so, you know, I, I say this. If you're a Bulls fan and you're a better, bet on the over on that one. I feel pretty confident you'll get your money on that one. Uh, but when it comes to these power rankings, man, power rankings are a thing, mm -hmm. uh, basically a snapshot of what's the national conversation right now. Did That's the how Bulls I look at hit the over last year? Yeah, because I think we were, I think it was 38 wins last year, if I'm not mistaken. Okay, all right. All right. Yeah, so. I'd still say bet the over. Yeah, bet the over. Uh, But, you know, it is what it is, man. I don't, I, I don't take too much stock in this. It's not like I'm making and breaking my whole Bulls opinion or outlook on this upcoming season based off some damn power rankings from ESPN of all Very places. Very early but power rankings, by the way. We haven't even seen training camp. We haven't seen, I, I, we haven't seen, 90% of the team play like and the players yeah. that we saw play might not play. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. It's, it's, and it, you know, this was a pretty, a fairly active off season too. When you look at some of the players that the player movement around the league, yeah, the bulls didn't get super active, but you know, it is what it is, man. I think, you know, when it comes down to it, this is, it is what it is. It's a preseason ranking. It's based off a lot of assumptions from last season. And you haven't really gotten to see any of these teams with their new pieces. And, you know, every year there's a team that added a piece that everybody thinks is going to take them to the next level that you look at and you'd be like, dang, that didn't work. And then, yeah. then you look at it and you're like, hey, that little move that they made ended up paying off pretty big for that team, which I think Marcus Smart could absolutely be for the Memphis Grizzlies, both before and after John Morant comes back. I think that could be a huge move for the Grizzlies. Was there anybody above the Bulls that you would put the Bulls ahead of? I mean, there's a lot of teams to choose from, but... There's a lot of teams to choose from. I mean, in fairness, I would... Uh, I would probably still rank the Bulls above the Pacers right now. That's just my personal opinion. That's probably my own bias. But honestly, the Jazz being above them, I can understand. The Brooklyn Nets, when you look at how they played even after trading Ray Kyrie, I, I can understand it. Maybe the Atlanta fell Hawks. Off, though. The Nets was surprising to me. They kind of fell off in the second half of that season. Not really. Not after the Kyrie. Remember, after the Kyrie and KD trade, I think they won like eight games in a row or something after that. I think that was like the 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 biggest part of their, <laughs> you dig, I think they like tanked right after that. But they, but they had won so many games because of the deal. I want to say that they were still in a good I'm gonna position. I'm going to go back and look real quick. Finishing the season. Second. I think they finished that season kind of limping into the playoffs, and then they got their butts kicked immediately. Oh shit! They you're right. They after that initial trade, they did. They won a, a nice full, but it it was like two wins, three losses, two wins, one loss, two wins, one loss, another win, four losses in a row. They, so they tough. No. Yeah, it was up and down. It was up and down. <laughs> oh wait, yeah. I, I don't know. I I'd have put the Bulls above the Nets probably. Yeah, the Hawks. The Hawks coming in at that high was 18th for the Hawks. That I just I don't have a belief in this team. And and here's the thing. After now they did play better when they hired Quinn Snyder. True. Which they should. He's a better coach. He's a he's a better coach, yes. 100 percent Yes. But I'm I don't know. It, it's I guess you weigh it differently now because also, right, you think about the fact that the Hawks lost to the team that ended up going to the NBA finals. True, true. Like at first, you're probably like when you see them lose in the in the um in the first round, right? You're like, oh, well, I don't know about this one, man. Like, I I, I don't I don't th believe in this Hawks team. And then you're like, oh, well, they did lose to the team that ended up going on to be champions, so or almost champions. So I, mean, they I guess I can, at the end of I guess I can see too. that. Yeah, I mean, better coach. Uh, they they brought in who did they bring into that team this offseason? They traded away John Collins. Did they make a? Did, they brought in Wesley Matthews. That was a couple of days ago. Patty Mills. They brought in Bogdan Bogdanovich. They've already had AJ Griffin played pretty well for them last season. Yeah. But yeah, they really didn't make a, a big key acquisition either, unless I'm just forgetting something. I I I, I don't know. I I don't have the Hawks. I'm not a believer in the Hawks. I haven't been a believer in the Hawks because I don't think the Trey Young plays well off ball, and yeah. you have to have Dejounte Murray on ball. So I don't know. It, it, 
it'll be an interesting uh it'll be an interesting season this year to kind of, cuz I, I i said this a couple of times too last season was a weird season like none of the teams that we thought were going to pan out did and then the lakers went to the western conference finals like what the heck like <laughs> yeah there you go um but we'll continue to talk next up we're going to talk about p will being labeled as the weakest link by of course no other place but Bleacher Report. But, you know, we'll get into that. Uh, but before we do that, got to talk to you guys about one of our sponsors, and that is FanDuel. Take your first swing at betting MLB on FanDuel and get 10 times your first bet amount in bonus bets up to $200. That's right. Just bet 20 bucks and you'll land $200 in bonus bets, win or lose. That's $200 you can spend betting on everything from the money line to the over-under to who you think is going to hit the first home run. All on one app that's safe, secure, and super easy to use. Plus, when you win, you can get paid instantly. There's no better place to bet that on MLB than FanDuel, America's number one sports book. So sign up today and visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get up to $200 in bonus bets. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on. FanDuel. Official partner of Major League Baseball. All right, Pat. So one thing that you can bet on every single offseason is that you're going to see P. Will absolutely cook people in open runs in programs. You're going to see it every offseason. And then you're going to get articles saying why P. Will sucks. It's going to happen every offseason. This hey, offseason, uh, we got an article. Uh, Bleach Report was listing the weakest link from every team. And, of course, Patrick Williams got uh, l- got uh, labeled as the weakest link. Now, I will say this. The article, when you read it, it was actually very complimentary of Patrick Williams. They pointed out how he increased his three-point shooting percentage, how, he, how, how amazing he is as a defender. But the one thing that they pointed out is that he, the bull, this version of this Bulls team really needs him to become a glue guy and that he doesn't really help bring the deficiencies of the other starting five players together, which is why you saw him get moved to the bench. Now, that asked, that's why I always say read it. The headlines, they do shit to do stuff to make you click on it. But actually reading the article, it wasn't really that that down on P-Will overall. Yeah. What do you think about it, Pat? It's so weird because is P-Will like the great value hoodie mellow? Yeah, that's basically like, what it is. Like... <laughs> At least Hoodie Mello, you could count on for like 17 points and, and, and six boards. Like, if we could count on P. Will for that, I'd love him. But I don't know, man. Like, it's, I, I, I agree. For this Bulls team to become whatever it's going to become, somebody's got to take that step. And P. Will's the guy who was selected to take that step. And it's not, this is not us putting unneeded pressure on P. Will or anything like that. AK has said we need him to play better. Billy Donovan has said we need him to play better. DeMar DeRozan has said we need him to play better. He's got to take some kind of step this season for Bulls fans to start feeling better. about. think about this, right? If P. Will simply becomes a role player this year, like a legit, like every night I can count on P. Will for 16 points and seven boards. We're going to feel completely different about what AK is. Building. Oh, facts, facts. A people that can even let's see. Now, I won't even go to that high. If people consistently gave twelve to fourteen points, six to seven boards, a block per game, and the defense defense that he gave last year, the least scored on player in the NBA last season, it completely changes the the outlook on on Patrick Williams. Completely. I saw that stat. I got to go back and, and you know, a little side. But uh, I got to go back and look through some of them because I'm like. It was in isolation specifically. Yeah, that's, yeah, yeah. That's I'm like, I'm A like, lot of people are quoting it and leaving out the fact of it's in isolation. So when people isolate on P-Will, they typically don't score, which is still a great stat. Like, Which is a good thing, yeah. but it's just like, how many times are you guarding a guy and you're not getting screened off, right? Like, you're not guarding Kawhi and the screen's not coming to you. Like, I don't think people think P. Will is weak. Def- you usually only do that versus people you think are weak defensively. Yeah, like Trey Young gets isolated on a lot. All the time. <laughs> I don't call for isolation on Trey Young, bro. Like, it's wild. Hey, somebody isolated his hair for sure. But I think... Uh, <laughs> that was God. That was nothing but divine that intervention was God. on that one. God, that was God did an isolation <laughs> on his hair. <laughs> Me and you, one-on-one. I'm playing you for your lighting. <laughs> oh man, we're never, you, never ending Trey Young jokes around here, y'all. Never. What ending. you want to play me for? Your hair, <laughs> your hair. I ain't got it. Uh, well, we can see that. 
<laughs> oh god. Uh, but yeah, no, I just I, I I feel like you know when when you talk about him being the weakest link, I I agree because here's the thing at the end of the day, if P will was a threat on a consistent basis like he was at the end of the season to stretch the floor and you're going to get the good defense and you're going to get, you know, him him being able to grab some rebounds and stuff like that. All of a sudden you come out of this entire Zach Levine era and you feel like this Bulls team is moving in the right direction. It's not the fact that we have DeMar DeRozan or Nikola Vucevic that Bulls fans are concerned about. It's the fact that we have outside of them like when they leave what are we gonna have yeah i don't know what the heck anybody is on this team and and i'll tell you this right now i saw i i, I think i don't know if it was mark k um but he there was a tweet where he said listen i get you guys want people to have more minutes but i don't know if uh trading away demar Derozan is the immediate answer to success and um it i kind of get what he's saying because there's still that unknown with p will yeah, because even in games where literally everybody else is gone, P will still put up eight shots, got nine points. That's what made me go on the whole. That's what made me. I think after I want to say that was a Milwaukee game. I tweeted out that was the day I tweeted out like, "Yep, P will's definitely not living up to what we want. He's a bust." <laughs> I mean, like, yeah, I. <laughs> P. Will is not, uh, you know me, I don't feel like he's a bust, but I do feel like, and I went back to the article, the exact phrase they use, and I think it's a great one. Well, uh, you, you get the Zion button ready. Uh, if P. Will can de develop into a gap filler who improves the fit between everyone else, he can shake this designation. Zion Williamson and porn stars. You gotta fill those gaps, You gotta man. fill those gaps, bro. Um, those gaps. But yeah, I mean, and, and I feel like that's a fair, like, uh, yeah, calling him the weakest link you know, it, it, it sounds like sensationalism, but that's really what this version of this Bulls team needs P-Will to be able to be the glue guy. And then add on to his role after that. As DeMar starts trickling down, as Vooch starts trickling down, hell, if Zach does, start adding on. But right now, we have not seen a base to where we feel like we can rely on P-Will to take any of that scoring load on. Great, great defender. Shout out to that. Yeah. We need you to rebound more. Somebody left a voicemail over on Chicago Bulls Center, and I thought it was great. They said that... If, Yes, we want to see people score more, but can you get us 100 blocks a season and 100 steals this upcoming season? I feel like that is a good path for people to start getting to the next spot. If you can get 100 blocks and 100 steals on top yeah. of 10, 11 points per game with your four or five rebounds, I feel like that's solid. But I think that's the thing too, right? Like the thing that we're all sitting here hoping for is it, you got to be the best at something. You're the fourth overall selection. What are you the best at? Or be really good at a bunch of other things. Like, or right, just be be yeah. really good at everything. That'd be great. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? But but you have to be you there. There's nothing about I, we said this a lot last year. There's nothing about P. Will's game that stands out. Because if the best thing that you can do on a team that has you know on the court at any time three defenders that aren't going to, you know, put their all into the defense, mm -hmm. you being the one lone defender isn't going to do very much. Fact. Yes, you're going to be good defending your man, but at the end of the day, the second that they pass the ball away from your man, I can attack DeMar DeRozan and get to the bucket. That doesn't help mm -hmm. me at all. You know what I mean? What are you going to do that's going to make an impact on this team on a night-in and night-out basis? And that's the question we still don't know with P. Will. Yeah. we that's, that's The biggest question with P. Will is that we have not seen a consistent level of anything from P. Will. We've seen flashes of a lot. Give us something consistent outside of three point shooting. Shout out to the three point shooting last year. Keep giving his us that. Yeah, I mean, listen, he doubled his three point attempts per game last yeah. season and made forty one percent of them. Shout out to you on that one. Keep that going with the defense. And I think that's a role that fits this team, and it's something that we needed. Yeah, I mean, and and I I will say this: like it is it is impressive that he improved his three point shot that much throughout the season. Like yeah. I I left the season feeling good about something he did, right? He, he was our best three-point shooter, I believe. And he, I mean, like, if you literally watch, go watch how he shot threes in the beginning of the season and watch how he finished the season shooting and threes. And the, the, that confidence came, he, because it, it used to, it started off last season wide open in the corner, which happens a lot in his Bulls. Like, he would still hesitate for a moment, then he would take it. By the end of the season, he was confidently, no dribbles, I'm open in the corner, I'm taking the three. Yeah. And so, 
let, let's let, like I, I I don't want to be down and act like people hasn't improved anything. He has improved, but right now it's not at the pace that this team that he needs to support this team at. And, and it only can and it only came in those what twenty one games at the end of the year. We keep saying the second half of the season. Realistically, the second half of the season was like the twenty one games after the All Star break when we had Pat Bev. Like that's well, that's no, really what was a consistent three point shooter throughout the whole season. Though his three point shooting was consistent the whole season. But but the amount he took increased at the end of the season. No, bro. Uh, Patrick Williams from the first month of the season on averaged first month of the season, 2.4 three pointers per game. But then in November, he averaged over three point three, three pointers per game the rest of the season. Keep it going. Yeah. That's just, like you said, keep, keep, it, keep going. it going. Keep so, it going. All right. Uh, next up, we're going to be talking about DeMar being called overrated yet again. Uh, but before we do that, I want to remind you guys that Locked on Bulls is free and available on every podcasting app and platform of your choice, as well as YouTube and the Odyssey app. But Pat, why do why do people still feel the need to doubt Demar Derozan? Bleach Report. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, listen, it's just it's it's literally like, hey, we need somebody who's going to go on this most overrated list. DeMar. Is Bleach Report a uh, are we are we still counting Bleach? I get it, they're they're a big network and stuff like that, but we still counting them as like a major news source. That there's a reason why Bleach Report is pivoting towards video content and pivot and getting away from the written content. That's all I'm gonna say. Because to me, if I had con- confidence in my written content, I'm not backing away from it. I'm gonna leave that at that. Y'all let y'all d- do what y'all want to do with that. Yeah, one. yeah. I, I don't. I don't. Uh... I mean, I, I don't know. Do people read anymore? Can you still read? Do people still I mean, read? We you? can, but the younger people, I don't know if they really care. Anything more than, than three sentences, they start losing their attention span. Bro. Like, <laughs> hey, listen, where's the audio book? That's what I'm <laughs> no, but I, I just think that that actually was saving. It's like you had people read the articles. Like they should hire they should hire us for that. Just just read just the me, articles. You just us, we're just gonna read the articles yeah, and just snicker you. as we go through it. Just, oh, okay. Yeah, I mean, uh and LeBron James is gonna, yeah, you know I mean, but no. Um I I don't get this. Like we were talking about this before the podcast started, right? Like it's it just what is what's overrated about DeMar? He can score on everybody. He's not a great defender. He Can't doesn't threes. take threes. Well, he actually did take threes. He didn't make threes. He doesn't shoot threes well. Like what? What? What are? What is? What's overrated? Like he literally like people talk about Demar Derozan as one of the toughest people to guard in the NBA. I, Players. I, Maybe they're saying that DeMar, again, this is me trying to rationalize it. I don't believe this, but this is just me trying to rationalize it. Maybe they're listing DeMar DeRozan as overrated because they're saying that his stats don't impact the game the way that you would think his stats do. But then again, I watch every single Chicago Bulls game. He impacts the game. Yeah, I, I don't I don't even get, like, what, what don't his stats impact? Yeah, I mean, like, I, I don't understand what angle they're trying to take here with overrated. Like, He's aptly rated. Like, everybody knows what DeMar DeRozan is. Everybody knows what DeMar DeRozan can do. And if you and piss him off, he can drop 40 it. on you. And that's, what, and that's the thing. Everybody knows the, the three spots DeMar is going to try to go to every single time. And they have not. The NBA has not been <laughs> able to stop it in over a decade. Yeah. So you can't be, to me, you can't be, like, I can I can understand they're saying, hey, we need more. It's a modern NBA. If he took more threes, I can understand any knock on his game. But to continue to call this man overrated, and keep in mind, I'm the person who I beat the drum of, I wish the Bulls would trade DeMar. Not to say that it's going to make P. Will any better, but yeah. I just want to see them take advantage of, of, the, the, of the value in him before he walks away for nothing, because I'm afraid that he's going to walk away for nothing. But yeah. even then, I can understand and state this man is not overrated. It's crazy, yeah. bro. I just I don't I don't get what you want. What is it that all of a sudden we think Demar is gonna do or that he's not contributing? Like it's like you said, he's been contributing the same thing to three teams for over a decade. Like what what are we what are we looking for here? Like I I I again what was this in the last podcast we did? Like we were ripping them for just off season. Like this is another stupid. Like who else is on there? Because Demar is fifth. So who else is overrated in the NBA? Uh, let me go back to the article. I'll if Trey Young's it. not one, I'm pissed. Because to me, Trey Young is the least impactful player on the team. I had somebody say <laughs> they would take Trey Young over Jalen Brown. I was like, oh, God. Wait, somebody said they would they would do what? They said they would have traded Jalen Brown for Trey Young. Huh? 
Yeah, I, yeah. Uh, can't have basketball conversations with everybody, bro. Like, <laughs> that's that's accurate. Uh, like it's it's bad. Like, and there's 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 a reason why. I, there, I, like I said, there's a point now in my life where I've just realized, hey, listen, I'm not talking basketball with everybody. So on the list, Demar Derozan was fifth. Kawhi right. Leonard was fourth. Jonas Valanciunas was three. Dylan Brooks was number two. DeMontis Sabonis was number one on that list. Trey Young, not on the list. God, Bleach Report, y'all suck. <laughs> um, who's, who, like, I guess I get kind of Kawhi, because, but, like, he's not overrated. He's just injury prone. How's that make him overrated? Like, I, I haven't heard anybody, like, he's, when he's healthy. If you have to start the sentence, when he's healthy, you know what he is. Sabonis is playing a role to me. Sabonis being number one on that list is stupid too, because to me, I think he's playing a role in with the Kings um, because we know what Sabonis can do. Sabonis can give you 25 and, and 15 every night. Yeah. But he's not being asked to be Jokic out there. Um. Man, that's interesting. Who else was on there? You said Jonas Valanciunas? Who Jonas rated Valanciunas Jonas Valanciunas? Where's the last time somebody rated Jonas Valanciunas? Bro? I've, never, I've never had anybody come up to me and be like, man, you know, Jonas Valanciunas really underrated. Like, what, y'all didn't have nothing to do today? That's I'm telling bro. you, dog. Like, the more and more we get into offseason content, it's I ridiculous. actually... I actually am very like I remember I was frying that one dude <laughs> I, about writing the article about nothing happened today. Like I actually appreciate that article yeah, more yeah, and yeah, more, yeah, yeah. bro. Because Bleach Report keeps talking about these stupid topics. Demar Derozan is 39th all time in B, in the NBA in score and overall points. He's behind Steph Curry who Steph Curry only has 20 more points, less than 20, it's 18 actually, more points than DeMar DeRozan, and we know the number of threes that Steph Curry hits. That's actually insane. That's I don't know crazy, if I that. bro. I don't know if I knew that stat. That's pretty insane. I'm not going to lie to you. That's wild when you sit there and think about the, 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 the lack of separation between those two considering how they score, right? DeMar That's DeRozan the is modern-day Jerry West. Yes, that is very. It's 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 just it's it's wild, bro. Like the, the stop disrespect. S Steph Curry has taken seven thousand nine hundred and twenty nine threes in his career. How many? You want to guess how many Demar Rose? I was taking? gonna say is Demar taking fifteen hundred, fifteen hundred sixty six, <laughs> and they are only separated by very minuscule points. He's Jerry West, bro. Bro, like it's. <laughs> Like, come on, man. Steph, and then the makes are even bigger. Steph Curry has made 3,393 uh, 3, 3, pointers over his career. You want to take a gander at how many DeMar DeRozan has made in this 500. career? 500. 456. I was going to say, there's no way he's made <laughs> over 500 three-pointers in his career. <laughs> <laughs> like, come on, man. Get a man some credit, bro. That's like, insane when you think about it for the modern NBA, though. Like, real talk. Like, think about that, dog. Like, here's the wild part, too, right? If AK wants to keep this team together for longer, if one of these young guys hits, blah, 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 re-signing DeMar wouldn't even surprise me because he's got a game that, like, I can be 40 and do. Like yeah. he's Rip Hamilton, basically. Yeah. Oh, Demar can be is probably going to average twenty over twenty points per game for as long as he decides to play. This year, matter of fact, he's probably going to pass. Uh, he may. I don't think he's going to break into the top thirty, but he's going to pass Clyde Drexler this year, which is crazy to think. That's insane, bro. Give that man some respect, bro. That's like insane, that's just all I'm bro. saying. All man. twos. All That's twos, bro. Now nah, listen, and, and I, free throws, <laughs> twos and free throws, bro. Now nah, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not hype about him passing Clyde. Clyde was doing the same thing. He was just finger rolling more. You know what I mean? Yeah, but yeah. that's. That's insane when you think about it, bro. Like that's a crazy stat that you you've had that in your back pocket all off season and just haven't pulled it out. No, I literally when I saw that article, I was. Uh, 
when I saw the article, I was like, let me, yeah. let me, let me get my thought process together on how I'm gonna break down and tear apart this article. And I was like, I remember DeMar ranked in the top 40 scoring all time. Let me go look at it. And I was looking at it, I'm like, hey man, y'all gotta shut up on DeMar, bro. Like y'all gotta <laughs> shut up on DeMar calling that man overrated, bro. I don't, I don't even that's the it, it, <laughs> we gotta and we've gotta stop using words just because they exist. Like that's the thing, too. <laughs> like, there's a certain way. <laughs> That you that if you want to say right like Demar Derozan like I don't even know what you could call him overrated at he's overrated as a score no he's overrated as a a defender absolutely not uh I don't know man that's that's a funny list that's an insane stat that that one I'm gonna tweet that out that so that needs to be common knowledge bro like I don't think people knew that <laughs> it's, or maybe it's, I just didn't know it maybe. It's, Mind boggling, bro. It's really Everybody is else is on the podcast. Like, does Pat really cover the Bulls? Like, I knew this. Like, you know, Muzz are gonna be in the comments on this. <laughs> uh, yes, yeah. I just and, and I the, actually it, have a board on my wall that just keeps track of all the best scores of all time. Yeah, that you know, actually you know, this is light work, bro. You gotta just, you know, you gotta update it every every uh, every other week. You know, you gotta do your thing. Bro. Hey, that would actually be cold. Have like a Wall Street wall where like it's got like the ticker that flips every time somebody scores a point. And bro, it, like, you, it. that would be that fire. Have, that, it'll it'll ma it manufacture, bro. Like uh, malfunction is the word I'm looking for because it's so many points scored, it, especially in the modern NBA. Yeah. The ticker just keep going, bro. It, it, <laughs> it, it, be... Like Steph just LeBron, scored again. LeBron, bro. LeBron, LeBron, exactly. LeBron, LeBron. The, the the random ESPN LeBron said LeBron just broke the all time record for right handed players that scored from the left side on a Thursday. I, I get so tired of that, bro. So no player on Thursday has ever. <laughs> and then LeBron just be feeding into it. He just be like, yeah, I woke up this morning and, you know, I just thought to myself, you know, it's a Thursday. Uh, might as well go out here and break this record. I started today with that when I was reading the first page of that book. <laughs> <laughs> A book that he never read and a song a that he, he doesn't never read. know the words to that he's going to be all <laughs> What did that one say? He said, what book was he reading? Or was it? No, he was watching Scarface. He was watching something, yeah. <laughs> he, said, he said, what's your favorite? Oh, no, The Godfather. He said, what's your favorite line from uh, from The Godfather? And he was like, oh, man, it's so many. So many. I mean, yeah. You can't narrow it down to just one. I'm like, this man be lying. Just straight lying. Unnecessarily. Bro, he don't even. He make, just loves he... to lie. Like, <laughs> remember, remember when Kevin Hart was talking about the raccoon that went bang bang? <laughs> like his wife was like, "Why do you lie?" Like that's how I feel about LeBron <laughs> at the podium. Just like hey, LeBron James, dog. Like, why do you lie? There's no need <laughs> for you to be lying. Why are um, you reading these books like this, bro? Like, what are you trying to show? It's time to go, bro. It's time to go. Follow me on everything at Pat the Designer. You can follow us both on everything at Locked On Bulls. Somebody tell LeBron stop lying, man. Like, jeez. <laughs> oh, man. You guys can follow me at CEO Hayes at CEO H-A-I-Z-E. -E. And thank you for making Locked On Bulls your first listen every day. We'll see you guys when we come back next week on Monday, man. For Pat the Designer, I'm Hayes. This has been Locked on Bulls. We Peace. out, y'all. Peace. He's lying all the time. What do you need for it? He's LeBron James. Oh, you know LeBron no, actually man. wrote Oppenheimer? You know he wrote that movie? He wrote <laughs> you know, the I woke up that morning. I just knew Kobe was going to have 81. I said, you might as well. <laughs>